Thank the gentleman, as we learned last night. Story time last night, we get story time first thing this morning. Ambassador Sondland, welcome. Glad you're here. Well, I'm really not glad you're here, but welcome to the fifth day of this circus. As I've noticed, noticed, noted before, the Democrats on this committee spent three years accusing President Trump of being a Russian agent. In March 2018, after a year-long investigation, Intelligence Committee Republicans issued a 240-page report describing in detail how the Russians meddled in the 2016 elections and making specific recommendations to improve our election security. Denouncing the report as a whitewash and accusing Republicans of subverting the investigation, the Democrats issued their own report, focusing on their now debunked conspiracy theory that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia to hack the elections. Notably, the Democrats vowed at the time to present a further, quote, comprehensive report, unquote, after they finished their investigation into Trump's treasonous collusion with Russia. For some completely inexplicable reason, after the implosion of their Russia hoax, the Democrats failed to issue that comprehensive report. We're still waiting. This episode shows how the Democrats have exploited the Intelligence Committee for political purposes for three years, culminating in these impeachment hearings and their mania to attack the president. No conspiracy theory is too outlandish for the Democrats. Time and time again, they floated the possibility of some far-fetched malfeasance by Trump, declared the dire need to investigate it, and then suddenly dropped the issue and moved on to their next asinine theory. A sampling of their accusations and insinuations includes these. Trump is a longtime Russian agent, as described in the Steele dossier. The Russians gave Trump advance access to emails stolen by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign. The Trump campaign based some of his activities on these stolen documents. Trump received nefarious materials from the Russians through a Trump campaign aid. Trump laundered Russian money through real estate deals. Trump was blackmailed by Russia through his financial exposure with Deutsche Bank. Trump had a diabolical plan to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. Trump changed the Republican National Committee platform to hurt Ukraine and benefit Russia. The Russians laundered money through the NRA for the Trump campaign. Trump's son-in-law lied about his Russian contacts while obtaining his security clearance. It's a long list of charges, all false. And I could go on and on and on, but I'll spare you for these moments. Clearly, these ludicrous accusations don't reflect committee members who are honestly searching for the truth. They are the actions of partisan extremists who hijacked the Intelligence Committee, transformed it into the Impeachment Committee, abandoned its core oversight functions, and turned it into a beachhead for ousting an elected president from office. You have to keep that history in mind as you consider the Democrats' latest catalog of supposed Trump outrages. Granted, a friendly call with the Ukrainian president wouldn't seem to rise to the same level as being a Russian agent, but the Democrats were running out of time. If they waited any longer, their impeachment circus would intervene with their own candidates' 2020 campaigns. So you have to give them points for creativity in selling this absurdity as an impeachable offense. All this explains why the Democrats have gathered zero Republican support in the House of Representatives for their impeachment crusade. In fact, the vote we held was a bipartisan vote against this impeachment inquiry. Speaker Pelosi, Chairman Schiff, and Chairman Nadler, the key figures behind this impeachment crusade, all proclaim that impeachment is so damaging to the country that it can only proceed with bipartisan support. Are those de declarations suddenly no longer true? Did impeachment become less divisive? Of course not. They know exactly what kind of damage they're inflicting on this nation. 
but they've passed the point of no return. After three years of preparation work, much of it spearheaded by the Democrats on this committee, using all the tools of Congress to accuse, investigate, indict, and smear the president, they stoked a frenzy amongst their most fanatical supporters that they can no longer control. Ambassador Sondland, you are here today to be smeared. But you'll make it through it. And I appreciate your service to this country, and I'm sorry that you've had to go through this. In closing, the Democrats have zeroed in on an anonymous whistleblower complaint that was cooked up in cooperation with the Democrats on this very committee. They lied to the American people about that cooperation and refused to let us question the whistleblower to discover the truth. Meanwhile, the Democrats lash out against anyone who questions or casts doubt on this spectacle. When Ukrainian President Zelensky denies anything improper happened on the phone call, the Democrats say that he's a liar. When journalists report on Ukraine election meddling and Hunter Biden's position on the board of corrupt Ukrainian companies, the Democrats label them conspiracy theorists. When the Democrats can't get any traction for their allegations of quid pro quo, they move the goalposts and accuse the president of extortion, then bribery, and at last resort, obstruction of justice. The American people sent us to Washington to solve problems, not to wage scorched earth political warfare against the other party. This impeachment is not helping the American people. It's not a legitimate use of taxpayer dollars and it's definitely not improving our national security. Finally, the Democrats' fake outrage that President Trump used his own channel to communicate with Ukraine. I'll remind my friends on the other side of the aisle that our first president, George Washington, directed his own diplomatic channels to secure a treaty with Great Britain. If my Democratic colleagues were around in 1794, they'd probably want to impeach him, too. Mr. Chairman, this morning we have transmitted to you a letter exercising our rights under HRS 660 to subpoena documents and witnesses. We take this step because you have failed to ensure fairness and objectivity in this inquiry. As such, we need to subpoena Hunter Biden and the whistleblower for closed-door depositions, as well as relevant documents from the DNC, Hunter Biden's firm, Rosemont Zeneca, and the whistleblower. In the interest of some basic level of fairness, we expect you to concur with these subpoenas. And I'll submit that letter for the record and yield back the balance of my time.